Follow me down the street. There's somebody you got to meet. It's a brand new age. It's a brand new age. He's got magic in a one-room shop. Learning about science never seems to stop. In a brand new age. In a brand new age. Follow me down the street. There's somebody you've got to meet. It's a brand new age. It's a brand new age. It's a brand new age. Talking about this one on your consumer report? Oh, sure. I gotta set it up and check it out first. I've been waiting for this. Oh, it's nice looking. Mm. I need a. Oh, Hero's got the screwdriver. Hey, watch this. You'll love this. I've been working on Hero for hours to get him to do this. Hero, come here. I am your liar. Sure, you can. Come to Papa. That's it. That's it. No, oh. Hero. It's oh. over here. Hero. Where's he going? Oh, hero. He's probably going to get another program, because that one obviously doesn't work very well. Attention, we have guests. Oh, that'll be Dana. Lovely, lock the door. Well, come on, Steve. What are you doing? Well, just let me bug her. Just this one. Please, Skip. Who right. is it? Voice print equals Dana. Identify yourself. Now let me in. Lovely, open the door. Thanks a lot. Hi, Skip. Hi, Dana. Lovely, hello. Hello, Dana. What are you up to? Well, I've been working on this assignment from school. Can you help me figure out what we want to be when we grow up? What are you going to be? Well, I thought I'd like to work with computers like you do, Skip. Right on. Another one of us. How about you? What are you going to be, kid? Well, I like computers and everything. I want to be something that has more action, you know, really exciting. Action? How about flying? Yeah, flying. That's it. Do you want to do it right now? Here? Yeah, sure. Come on. What do you mean? Well, we can do it with a technique called computer simulation. Well, listen. Uh, let's get Lumley to try it. Lumley, definition. Computer simulation. Computer simulation is a model of a situation or problem in real life. That's right on, Lumley. You see, if we use this, we can, we can almost predict the future. We can simulate the future in the computer and predict the results of the decisions and the actions that we take. Look, let's give it a shot, all right? Come on over to the command console, and we're going to stick you in the cockpit of the airplane and see how good a flyer you can be. You know, now that you guys are getting older, you're starting to think about what you want to do. It's, it's ter just a terrific idea to use the computer. Because with things like these simulation packages, you can try out different things that you want to do. All right. We're just about ready. Like, you can try on flying. The computer can actually let you feel what it's like to fly an airplane. This program makes it behave just as if it was an airplane. So if you don't do it right, you crash. And after you're all finished, you know a little bit more about airplanes, and you also have an idea of whether you'd like to be a pilot or not. All right, here we go. It's takeoff time. See those instruments along the bottom of the panel? Mm -hmm. And there's the runway right out in front of us. Now, the computer's taking over, and it's going to get us off the ground, because that's the hardest part of flying. But when we get it up in the air, now I'm just going to run it for a little bit. I don't know very much about this, but I'll see how far I can get. We use these two keys here to tilt the airplane from side to side. That's it. <laughs> Which is what it's like in real life. Now watch this. Let's fly over a little bit towards that tower. Oh, look at that. You're going right. to hit it. No, no, I'm going to straighten out in time. I've practiced this, right? And I use these two keys to climb. That's the wide Or, or, uh, or lower the nose in the plane. So we'll climb up a little bit. You see the instruments on the bottom? Believe me, it looks just like it does, uh, just like you're inside the cockpit of an airplane. You've got an instrument that tells you how high you are, how fast you're going. 
uh, and how, how much power the engine's putting out. I'll head back that way. Steve, take over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see those two keys? That's it. Can you get it leveled out? Oh, oh. Hey, what did I do? I hope this program comes equipped with air sick bags. Oh, you see, you're coming back out over the water again. Can you get it? To, can you get it to climb any? Climb. Yeah. Now. Well, I'm doing a dive. Oh, I think that's that means a stall. It's stalling. I think you're in trouble. You, you're definitely not. in trouble. He's always in trouble. All right. Uh, no. <clears throat> Have you decided whether you want to be a pilot yet? What's so confusing? Oh, it's not, uh... Oh, no, you're, you're actually, you're, you're doing okay. You're leveled out. See if you can get it back to the airport. To the airport? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure, just, that's right. Just bank the airplane around. Bank it some more. Bank it, that's it. Oh, I think something's happening. Uh oh, I went oh, the wrong oh, way. I think something serious is happening. I need an airport. There's the thing. airport. You found oh, the airport. Oh. <laughs> and you also oh. managed to do a loop. All right. But you're getting leveled out. Very good. Uh, well, what do you think? Uh, hey, this is neat. Oh, this is really great. This is absolutely fantastic. I just saved you from a serious death, kid. Oh. Can I try to? Sure, in just a minute. Let's, let's just talk about this simulation thing for a moment. Are you getting the idea about uh, of what it is? I mean, do you know what do you know what simulation's all about now? I think it's pretending that you went, when I crashed, I didn't even get hurt. That's right. You didn't get hurt. You could crash as many times as you want. You'd never get hurt. You could bust as many airplanes as you want, and you'd never get hurt. Stevie had to buy the airplanes. He's had ten already. I'll do better next time. Can you guys think of times when you simulate things without using a computer? Well, when I was little, sent me high to a grasshopper. I used to pretend my stuffed animals and dolls were real, and I used to play games with them. Yeah, well, when I'm at the movie, I like to think that I'm there with the hero. Just me and Indiana Jones. Oh, Indiana fantastic. Jones. How about when you're in a chess game? Aren't you really a knight in shining armor and you're riding forth to do battle? But after the game's over, all you do is pick up the pieces instead of the bodies. Hey, that's right. Hey, Skip, do you have any more dangerous simulation games? You want the real stuff? Yeah. How about driving a Formula One racer or landing the lunar module? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you, you try it. You can be the first ten-year-old astronaut. All right, come on over to the workbench, and I'll set it up for you. That's it. Dana, get your space helmet on, kid. Buckle up. <clears throat> Plugging you in, turn it on, switch on the side. Now, all you got to do is hit the F1 key, and you are in business. Then how do I control this? All right, you use the F1 key, and that's your down blaster. Just hit that, and you're away, okay? Now, see that the capsule's going to drift across, and you've got to land right up there where it says two. That's your, your down blaster. Now, the A key and the D key, they keep it moving from... Oh, too bad, you know. Just remember, Apollo didn't get it. They didn't get a second chance. Okay, here you go again. Can you do it? That's... Oh, very nice. Fantastic. Send this woman to Cape Canaveral. <laughs> That's all there is to it. It's a real simulation. That's what they did when they trained the astronauts to land at the uh, to, to land on the moon. You know, there really are two different kinds of simulations. There's the kind where uh, you imagine things, and there's the kind like this. Can you see the difference between the two? When you use your imagination, all you do is just sit there and think. That's right. But. When you get to play chess or with the computer, you get to move your hands and do things. That's right. That's what's so fantastic about the computer. You do something, then the computer does something, then you do something, and so on. That's called interactive. And that's what the computer is best at. Listen, we can do some more interactive stuff in a minute. Yeah. But I got some mail that I got to look after. And if you guys come over and give me a hand, and you'll love it, because it's electronic mail, we can try something else out afterwards. All right? Let's yeah. go. Yeah. OK. Let's get a, take a seat here. This is one of my favorites. Watch this. Lovely display mail. Acknowledged. 
There it is. Lumley is a very wired guy. Actually, he's connected on the telephone lines to everybody who's got a computer all around the country. Watch this. Okay. This is my first message. Oh, this is boring. Oh, this is from Simon. See, his network code is E367. Da -da 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 -da. Today's date, 1545 is the time. I haven't read it. And it's about rescheduling a meeting. Shoot, let's see what else I got. That's from Grossfield. Evaluation of new software. Oh, I can do that tomorrow. Let's see what... This... Oh, this is from Bill. It's got a good joke for Lumley. Hey, do you want to take a look at it? What can we lose? All right. Let's see. Here's one for Lumley. How do you get... What do you get when you cross a computer with a rabbit? A computer that jumps to conclusions. <laughs> That's where you get all your jokes from. Oh, Bill. Oh, guys, come on. This, uh, you just don't appreciate the, the, the subtlety of a joke like that. Oh, Look, I'm going to send a message back to him anyway. All right, here we go. See, Lumley wants to know. Am I ready to send now? I say yes. And he wants to know who to. And I say to Bill. All right, Lumley fills in everything else. And I'm just going to say, hi, Bill. Thanks for the joke. <clears throat> Lumley will love it. And he will. Now, do you know what's going to happen when I hit this? When I hit this key, Lumley is going to look up Bill's number in his memory banks. He's going to dial the number, and he's going to send that whole message to Bill's computer. So when Bill comes in and does the same thing that we've just done, the message will be there for him. Watch this. See, he's dialing, he just sent the message, and he's all done. So now Bill has a message. That's right. I've just done my mail for the day. Isn't that fantastic? That really oh, is. really? Oh, I love this stuff. Skip, I mean, I like that, but how did you learn how to program all these things, and, you know? I merely trained for 73 years. Skip, really? Well, I only look like I'm 17 because uh, computers keep me young. Mm. <laughs> now listen, training's a really important part of simulation. That's what we've been doing. Remember the flying? When you were trying to drive that plane around the sky and avoid coming down in a cloud of sticks, you were actually learning to be a pilot. I'm serious. Well, let me show you what I mean. Lumley, roll segment 598. 598 is rolling. Since we're going to talk about computer simulation, I'd like to show you guys some pictures a kind of simulation that's been around for a long time. These are the flight training simulators at a small airport. And they're used to train pilots to fly in instrument conditions. I mean, that's conditions where they can't actually see outside the aircraft, inside clouds, at, at night, and so on. There are computers in these simulators being used to put information up on the screen and generally move that picture around as the pilot manipulates the controls. He's lowering his flaps now. He's getting ready to make a landing. He's losing altitude. He's got his fingers crossed. He's grabbing the handles with white knuckles, just like you were, Steve, when you were trying the simulator. Here's a much more advanced version of the same kind of thing. These are people who are being trained to pilot those enormous ocean-going ships, like the big oil carriers and the grain carriers that travel on the Great Lakes and back and forth across the ocean. You can imagine that it takes quite a bit of training. If I told you that between seven and 12 miles are needed to slow one of these monster ships down so that it can start a turn. In this case, the computer is being used to create images of places around the world, harbors, docks, and channels. And the people being trained stand in this simulation or model of the bridge of a real ship and maneuver the ship around just as if they were on the ocean. The computer creates pictures outside the window for them, keeps track of what they were doing, and when it's all finished, lets them know how well he did. Here we've got a picture of the shuttle going up. And I thought I'd stick that in here because it's not hard to imagine that the shuttle and a lot of rockets, including the whole Apollo series, couldn't really have done anything without the use of computers. We could see the arm in the shuttle being simulated here by a computer. 
computer's creating a picture of the arm and moving that arm around under the control of the operator. So the operator is getting some practice in seeing what happens when he moves the controls. And he can also test out the actual operation of the arm because the computer is capable of simulating what would happen if the arm was pushed too far or whatever. Right now he's gonna pick that big cargo pot up and sling it off into space. Stevie, you better get your catcher's mitt out. Get out there and handle it if something goes wrong. Okay. Now in the next series of shots, we can see a fairly important simulation. This is going to be a simulation of the landing of the shuttlecraft itself. You can imagine that the astronauts who piloted the shuttle only got one chance. When they went into space for the first time, it was go for it, no second tries. So instead, a computer simulation was created and a picture of the desert airfield that the shuttle was going to land on was created by the computer on a screen outside the window of this model of the shuttlecraft's cabin. The astronauts can maneuver the controls of the shuttle and the computer will change the picture outside the shuttle just as if it was a real shuttle making a real landing. This way they can get lots of training. Okay, guys, I'm going to wind this up with some beautiful shots of one of the satellites that was sent quite a few years ago now to visit a number of planets in the solar system. Isn't this gorgeous? This is a simulation of the Voyager satellite's approach to Saturn. So we actually knew before we started what the planet would look like from the perspective of the satellite long before it actually got there. And all because we could simulate it it's really something. I love this stuff. Let's try something different. Do you remember that psychiatrist I told you about before? Oh, yeah, do we have to try that? Yeah. Listen, guys, I need some help with this. We'll set up another machine. Grab the keyboard, Steve. Bring over the workbench. Okay, come on, Danny. Give me a hand. All right. I'll just switch this off, set this guy up on top, and swing the computer around here. Now, <clears throat> what, what I want to show you is actually an experiment in artificial intelligence. Sounds neat, eh? Yeah. Let me just hook this up, get our, our friend talking here. Just let me plug in this keyboard here. All right. Seriously, this is really a simulation of an electronic psychiatrist. So, Dana, you have problems, do you? You are feeling a little off-key. Ho, 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 ho. Yes. Tell your problems to the computer. Well, I'm afraid of the dark, and I see creepy shadows on, in my room. I'm afraid of the dark. Oh. Mm, let's see what Eliza has to say. Do you enjoy being that way? No! Do you enjoy being that way? No, no, no! I see creepy shadows. Let's see. Do you say that for some special reason? Of course, because it's you true. Say that for some special reason. It's hmm. true. Let's change the subject. Let's change the subject. She's a real help. <laughs> Can you help me? You believe I can solve you? You believe I can. Guys, seriously, this is how... There's a bigger version of this program that's actually used to talk to patients in hospitals. What do you think? It's great. It's so neat. You know, Skip, what I want to know is... You know, where do I buy these kind of things? Do they cost a lot? Oh, have I got a show for you. Let's take a look at a Mr. Mr. Microchip Microchip Consumer, Consumer Report. Report. Come on, guys. Let's go. Lovely. Roll segment one five. One five is rolling. Oh, 
Hi, I'm Mr. Microchip. You're probably familiar with the term software package. It's the computer program that gives instructions to the computer. The part that is the game you like to play or that teaches you something new. If you use computers at school or at a library, then you've probably thought about writing your own programs or inventing a new game if you haven't tried it already. Sometimes I write programs for my work and I have to make extra copies. All I do is give the computer a simple command to print the instructions on my program. And it will make a copy on tape, or disk, or paper. Now, if the person who needs my copy has access to the same type of computer, they can load the copy of my program directly into the computer without all the trouble that I had of having to key in all the instructions. It's that easy. One time, though, I tried to make a copy of a popular game. And you know what? Something weird happened. The computer keys and keyboard didn't work the way they were supposed to. So I tried to key in the instruction print, but the letters P-R-I-N-T wouldn't appear on the screen. Instead, my spaceship suddenly went sideways and fired its laser. It was pretty strange. The computer just wouldn't obey the simple command it obeyed before when I asked it to print a list of my own program's instructions or make a copy on tape or disk. In fact, I learned that when a popular program is running, sometimes lots of keys won't do anything. The computer is in good working order, so what's happening? Well, there's a good reason why the computer acted kind of confused. The person who wrote the program I was trying to copy also programmed in a special instruction to prevent the computer from carrying out my command to make a copy or print a list of that program's instructions. Why would somebody want to do that? Let's imagine for a moment that you're the person writing an interesting new program. You put a lot of time and thought into writing it and testing it. And finally, you're finished. Your new program has more than 10,000 instructions or steps in it. And to figure all that out, it took you six months or more. So it just doesn't seem right that someone else should be able to make a copy in just a few minutes of something that took you six months to figure out. That's why people who write programs build in special instructions to stop people from making copies. Lots of other people agree that it's wrong to take away someone's hard work so easily. So they made a law. It's called the copyright law. And when you see the copyright symbol, a small letter C inside a circle, then you know it's against the law to copy that program. So now, I know not to try to make copies of popular software programs. And now you know about the copyright law. Happy computing. I'm Mr. Microchip. Well, maybe that answers some of your questions, Stevie. Yeah, that was really great. I can't wait to get my own program. Look, why don't we take a look at a game that I'm working on right now. It's a simulation, and it's called A Day at the Races. Okay, up there on the screen, we're going to see the music coming up, and the horses are going to charge around the screen. You guys can lay some bets and everything. All right, <clears throat> and I'll bet you that I come out with more money than you do at the end of this game. Bet. All right, you're on. Thousand to one? Me too. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna take, uh, I think I'll take Velvet Prince at nine to two. 